Uh, it's really a happy few session. I don't know how many of you works in operating room, except Massimo. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's interesting because we have uh, the expert of uh, ventilation, and maybe we'll try to discuss more the concept that more than the operating room, uh, what we'll, we do. And we have uh, the lucky to have Goran in here now with us. Uh, that's uh, nice. Um, my talk will try to convince everybody that today we can apply the protective ventilation uh, in uh, all intubated patients, both healthy and unhealthy patients, and uh, how we can transfer the concept of uh, protective ventilation in healthy patients. Then, uh, intraoperative mechanical ventilation, uh, you have two main objectives. First of all, to ensure gas action, that means arterial oxygenation and ventilation during surgery under general anesthesia. And now we should absolutely convince everybody that you also should limit the risk of postoperative pulmonary complication by modifying the uh, setting of the ventilator. Then we can just by optimizing ventilatory setting impact the outcome of the patient. This is very new because usually we know that the surgeon is uh, uh, the, the most important person in the surgery, but now we can say also that the anesthesiologist is probably uh, important. This is my point of view. This is a modification of the respiratory function uh, due to the uh, surgery and general anesthesia procedure. It's summarized on this um, uh, scheme, and you see that the main uh, major uh, factors are the pulmonary volumes decrease, all volumes decrease uh, as soon as uh, the CRF, the tidal volume, and leading diaphragm dysfunction and uh, atelectasis, and all these uh, developed uh, uh, vicious circle uh, leading to the postoperative pulmonary complication, mainly hypoxemia and acute respiratory failure. Please note that it's totally different. We can have hypoxemia without acute respiratory failure in this postoperative patient, and this is very important when you speak about, and uh, that uh, it was noticed uh, this morning by Goran Edin showing that it's probably not the same thing to have hypoxemia alone without acute respiratory failure. This is uh, my favorite physiological study. And as you know, it's coming with uh, um, le expert leader, including Gorin Edenstierna. And this is my point of view, the most important paper which helped to explain all of the mechanical ventilation and the impact that we have. In this uh, physiological study, the, the others evaluated uh, three groups of U-based patients, U-based patients that it's an experimental model of patients with uh, low compliance. <coughs> and then they evaluated three strategies. First strategy is just to apply the PEEP alone, uh, 10 centimeters of water, and uh, they evaluated different uh, physiological variables, here is your oxygenation, and just after induction of general anesthesia, you have a decrease of oxygenation, and this remains until uh, several minutes after the surgery. Then they evaluate a second group of patients using recruitment maneuver. The recruitment maneuver in this trial consists of a CPAP of 55 centimeters of water during 10 seconds. And this is very important to understand why 55 and not 13 or 14, but a short period. And it's probably not barotraumatic for a very short period. It's just the pressure needed to open the alveoli which close. And then you see you have exactly the same uh, curve about the oxygenation. And the first group is both. That means open the lung by recruitment maneuver and keep the lung open by put the PEEP at 10 centimeters of water. This is very simple, and you have exactly the same in the trial with the compliance. But my favorite is this slide. This slide is absolutely wonderful. You have, from the top of the button, the group of PEEP, as you know, which is a normal line before induction of general anesthesia. Of the button, you have the recruitment maneuver group, 
and both you have I called gold standard, which is association of recruitment maneuver and PIP that means open the link and keep it open. Then immediately after general anesthesia, as shown by first uh, uh, team is uh, Goran Edinstjana, an absolutely wonderful paper uh, showing that just few seconds after general anesthesia, and now in our center in Montpellier, we absolutely reproduce the same data showing this. It just after 30 seconds, we have uh, atelectasis like this, especially in this obese patient. Really impressive, and you see every all the group uh, of the patients show this. And then, what happened when you put PIP or recruitment maneuver? Unfortunately, nothing. That means recruitment maneuver alone is not enough to maintain the lung open. It's open, probably, but immediately, a few seconds after, it closed. And the PIP at 10 centimeters, probably, it's not enough to open the, the, the lung. That means, please, never said PIP recruited. PIP just avoid the recruitment. This is totally different. And then what happened when you applied recruitment plus PIP, and this is wonderful that you open the line and keep it open. This is absolutely wonderful. It's normal, healthy, obese lung patients. Probably it's not exactly the same for the RS patient, depending on the morphology and the phenotype of the uh, uh, lesion in the CT scan. And then what happened 20 minutes after? Because maybe some of you said, let the PIP act, but not problem. It's uh, not enough again, but it's remain open with the recruitment plus PIP. Then we have partially uh, the answer of the question of uh, I don't know if, yes, is Antonio ask uh, Massimo about recruitment maneuver? Is this in, is a good sense, Massimo, or, I don't know, one of yes. ask the other. Yes, correct, okay. Then is for this patient, it's probably interesting to make recruitment maneuver. And this patient uh, have been under general anesthesia with the pneumopaid one. That is also additional phenomenon. Maybe we can discuss this point with, Je with uh, Goran uh, after because it's absolutely pedagogical point to understand what happened. And then we can have this dream uh, to try to one day no atelectasis, no pulmonary complication in some patient because this is a major problem about recruitment and de-recruitment. Then I try to convince everybody it's my, it's my job, I think, uh, to try to change the paradigm of anesthesiology is that for a, all intubated patients, we should apply the same concept than RAS patient. And this is time for change today. And uh, all the job of my team, and probably uh, we follow the, all of you, especially Goran, is try to transfer the concept of anesthesia to ICU care and from anesthesia, from ICU to anesthesia care. And we try to develop the concept of positive perioperative protective ventilation called pop ventilation. And this pop ventilation is simple to remember, is try to maintain open the lung during all the procedure. All the procedure mean what? Mean before the procedure, try to optimize, during the procedure and after the procedure. And this is very difficult, very difficult to explain to my friends and colleagues anesthesiologists because some of them only works during all the care because the majority, for example, in, in US says only the patient during procedure, not after, not before. And this is really uh, a huge work for the future and I think we can win some uh, patient. And this is uh, in clinical um, practice is during Surgery during operative, we applied lung protective ventilation using low tidal volume, six to eight millit per kilogram protective body weight, PIP six to eight. Please note that it's not high PIP, six to eight, and recruitment maneuver each time what is necessary. That means when you induce the recruitment every time. Try to preoperative using positive pressure to preoxygenate the patient because as we know now, Immediately after general anesthesia using balloon, you have the recruitment. If you use positive pressure, now we have data showing that you can avoid atelectasia occurrence. And then after surgery in selected patient, you can apply positive pressure 
both CPAP or BiPAP in selected patients at risk as preventive strategy. And then the aim of this is to try to maintain during all the procedure the lung open. And this is absolutely difficult to, uh, this message is difficult, I think, to, uh, for everybody. Then the prevention is better than cure, and thus we know this, I think we have uh, time to win. And this is a uh, most largest uh, published trial uh, until today in the Lancet uh, from uh, a large group uh, leading by Robert Pierce. And uh, you see uh, the overall crude mortality in Europe in overall patient is 4%. And this slide showing uh, the different rate, different country in Europe, uh, and uh, as uh, Robert is uh, uh, UK, from UK, UK is the reference, and as you see, from the top you, uh, you decrease the rate of the mortality, and from the bottom you increase. For example, you see here, from some country, you increase and you multiply by uh, five to eight, uh, the risk of mortality of overall. And this is very high rate of mortality, really high rate of uh, surgical patient uh, non-selected. And then, secondly, you have this nice paper showing that the patient who developed acute respiratory failure, acute respiratory failure, after surgery, the mortality is around 16% in comparison to 0.3% in patients who never developed acute respiratory failure. This is very important that to try to avoid the occurrence more than to treat it. Then, how we can improve the uh, outcome of surgical patients by decreasing postoperative pulmonary complications? We can try to uh, modify some patient risk factors. Uh, for example, alcohol or tobacco or use other medication, surgical risk factor. In my experience, please try to have the best surgeon. This is, I think, uh, the more important uh, in the multivariate analysis is the best, I think. <laughs> and um, about the anesthetic risk factors, you can try to use uh, local regional anesthesia, limit the fluid, and then and then I optimize hemodynamic, but the ventilatory strategy is the debate of today. This is a brief history, you see, since uh, 63, the first paper, I think this paper killed several patients in my point of view. Um, and then after 50 years ago, the question is, could you apply lung protective ventilation for all? And I think we have more than 20 or 13 years later than ICU in anesthesia uh, for changing uh, the concept. Then today we have uh, uh, right with Ari Serpanito, some recommendation for uh, patients with uh, healthy lung, and uh, probably you have always the U-curve, the U-ship curve, showing that high tidal volume is no good, but also very low tidal volume alone without uh, significant PIP is probably no good for the collapse, and probably we should define individual optimal uh, tidal volume. Please note that the obese patient, you should always take into account only the predicted body weight, not the actual body weight, and it's very important because the lung size is exactly the same. The lung volume is depending on the height and not of the uh, weight. This is very important because we see, we have several data showing that the patients, the obese patient developed more IDS than the non-obese patient and probably uh, this is due to the mistake of the tidal volume received by the patients. In a simple way for uh, uh, a physician like me, or because I'm anesthesiologist and intensivist, to remember just 8 minus 100 for men and uh, 110 for women, in a simple way. And for the PIP, exactly the same. And then the lung protective ventilation, in my point of view, should always combine the free strategy, not one of these three strategies, low tidal volume, PEEP, and recruitment maneuver. This shown first uh, for the lung volume by the group of uh, Gajik, showing that the patient ventilated more than 12 meters per kilogram, developed more acute lung injury uh, in comparison to those who received less than 9 meters per kilogram. Be this patient have healthy lung at admission ICU, 
And the first randomized control trial performed by the group of Marcus Schultz showed also that 6 versus 10 meat per kilogram, uh, the patient who received uh, 10 meat per kilogram developed significantly more acute lung injury after a few days of mechanical ventilation. And this was uh, clearly shown by several uh, trials. This is a um, nice uh, meta-analysis showing uh, that uh, the patient who, rece who received the high tidal volume in comparison to those who received low tidal volume developed more lung injury and higher mortality and more pulmonary infection and also atelectasis. Now, uh, do we have some randomized trial in operating room? We have three large randomized trial in abdominal surgery. Uh, this is the first from uh, uh, Italian group with uh, our friend uh, Paolo Pelozzi uh, showing uh, it's a wonderful study because it's an absolutely nice physiological one uh, showing the standard ventilation in comparison to lung protective ventilation as you show uh, and used less um, lung injury and the less uh, pulmonary infection using a modified CPS score. This is the first one uh, <coughs> giving us a signal uh, that we uh, allowed us to perform two large randomized trials, one uh, European uh, study called the Provilo study, which in fact compared not in a bundle, but compared in reality low PIP in a control group versus high PIP, but high is very high, is 12, and at the same tidal volume and recruitment maneuver, but not a classical one. This is a Provilo study and uh, the French uh, study called Improved Study compared a bundle, that means association of the three strategies that I showed you, tidal volume 6 to 8, milli per kilogram, PIP 6 to 8, and recruitment maneuver immediately after intubation and every 30 minutes and every time when you necessary after sessioning. And the control room is what we done in France at this period is 10 to 12 minutes per kilogram, no PIP, no recruitment maneuver. And this was published at the same period. This is just to show you, for example, for a patient with uh, 150 centimeters and 65, this you have this value, you see 700 milliliter and uh, uh, closely 500, PIP8, PIP0, and you have, sorry, this showing that we show at the left part that you have every day in uh, the operating room, and I hope that every day we should have at the right now for the future, like in uh, ICU, when we work both, I work in ICU and operating room, and absolutely, this is my dream to have uh, for all my uh, patients uh, the right uh, panel. And uh, this trial of uh, IMPROVE showed a significant reduction of post-operative pulmonary and extrapulmonary complication from 28% to 11% in the first seven days after surgery. And this was the uh, first time showing that uh, just it cost uh, no money, just uh, changing uh, the, uh, the, the button of the ventilator, you can improve uh, outcome in for our patient. Unfortunately, uh, our Provilo study showed no significant difference, uh, and it's absolutely very close, similar patient, but you know, uh, no significant difference. In fact, there's no controversy about these two trials. It's absolutely complementary. Uh, all the other are friends, I assure you, and uh, there's absolutely, we, we, leave exactly the same history than RDS in the more than, uh, I don't remember exactly, 20 years ago. As you see, the two trial is different in terms of PIP. One, the French compare zero versus six. The other compare two centimeter versus 12. That means it's absolutely different. And note that the tidal volume is absolutely different. One have seven in both group. The other was six versus 11. And as you can see, the recruitment maneuver is performed in a different way. And then the conclusion of uh, the problem was a strategy with a high level of PIP and recruitment does not protect against protective pulmonary. I moderate this because I said probably it's not high, but it's too high. And I discussed with uh, my friend about this point because I think 12, uh, because uh, the mean airway pressure is not the same in both group in this uh, trial in comparison to the improved study. Then, why uh, PIP alone is not always sufficient? Because probably, sorry, you should have the association of the three and not one of them. This is my 
conclusion and we can discuss this point because we need a bundle uh, with a multifaceted approach. Now we submitted this second trial um, is a thoracic surgery after lung cancer for a majority and uh, we applied also uh, similar approaches with uh, non-lung protective ventilation which was a standard strategy using the uh, thoracic uh, operating room and lung protective and we also observed for the first time a significant decrease in 20 from 22 to uh, 13 percent this is a submitted the paper is submitted then we have also absolutely similar data uh, from uh, the prov network group uh, leading by Arisar Panetto and Marcus and Paolo showing the same thing about the uh, um, driving pressure as you know here more the driving pressure increase more you have pulmonary complication in postoperative period and the cutoff also is around uh, uh, 13 centimeters. Then the take home message now we can absolutely uh, recommend uh, to limit the tidal volume less than 8 milliliter per kilogram, P between 6 to 8, and the respiratory rate uh, to obtain uh, non tidal CO2 around 40, not uh, always uh, 25 or 13, and uh, not also an oxygen saturation at 100% probably more than 95% it's enough and this is for the RDS patients. Then my last slide is uh, please in uh, surgery use low tidal volume today to limit uh, volotrauma, limit uh, please uh, uh, the uh, atelectotrauma by using recruitment maneuver in selected patient as shown especially when you perform celioscopy with pneumotheritone. Please avoid atelectotrauma by using PEEP low plateau pressure, low driving pressure, and please, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Yoshida, I think we should use <laughs> spontaneous ventilation as soon as possible when all is okay, <laughs> especially in this patient. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.